Greetings, Glitter Gang, and happy Thursday. Welcome back to Catherine Scraps Live. My name is Catherine. Today I'm going to be crafting live from, in, with the Christmas in July album. Yes, it's September. Don't worry about it. Time is fake anyways, so doesn't matter. Oh my gosh. That better not be a little Marcel that I just heard. I really thought we were going to be Marcel free today. <laughs> okay. I think we're safe. I think it was just my printer squeaking. Um, so, oh no, it wasn't my printer squeaking. Hi, Marcel. Hi. How did you know, buddy? How did you know, huh? So, what do you think Marcel's favorite room in the house is? What do you think? What do you all think? What do you think it could, what room do you think could be the room that holds the most fascination for Marcel, the shell with shoes on? If you guessed the craft room slash office, you would be correct. Look how big he is though. Look how big Marcel is. Look how big. What a big kitty he's becoming. He's going to be a big one. He's going to be big. Big like kitty. Yeah. Like his favorite kitty. Um, so here's Marcel once again. So the reason I thought we might be Marcel free is because Marcel has learned how to go on the lanai. So he knows how to get outside now. He's figured it out. He figured it out on his own. We didn't just from observing the other cats. We didn't have to have any uh, training sessions or anything like that. Um, hi, buddy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So, um, well, I guess we'll start with a little Marcel update since he's decided. Yeah, he's decided to join us. You can turn the microphone for everyone. Yeah. You're, you're, no, don't, don't bite the microphone. I don't think they want, they don't want to hear your mouth noises. Stop it. No, stop biting the microphone. Stop it. Marcel. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear him purring or what you were hearing, but uh, <laughs> he's going to have, I think, a pretty big purr like Kitty as well. So eventually when he's a little bigger, I think the microphone should be able to pick it up. I'm, um... I'm also printing, so I'm going to leave him here on the craft desk and just go swap paper really quickly. Um, I don't think we have enough paper um, and accessories to finish the album because we do have so much left to do still. Um, but, um, okay, Marcel. Yeah, you got to get out of the chair. All right, here, let me, let me help you. Hey, up, up on the desk, please. Up on the desk, please. Thank you. Okay, so um, Marcel update, learned how to use a cat door. So he, and he had gone outside, I don't know, maybe a half an hour before I come up here to start working on things for the show. So I figured if I hadn't seen him by the time the show started, then maybe he was just going to stay out there. Um, but... <laughs> He just knows. He just knows. And when I work up here, whenever I work up here, he's up here. So, like, I was here on Tuesday night. Um, stop it, please. And um, he was up here almost the entire time that I was up here. Um, and so he's definitely very interested in the office. There's a lot of fun stuff in the office, especially if you're a little kitty that loves playing with paper scraps which Marcel is. Marcel definitely loves paper scraps. Um, so he's going to be, I think he's just going to be the mascot for the show. So he's just going to be the show mascot. And that's just, we're just going to have to, you know, that's just going to be the new normal. <laughs> so, um, because again, I can't keep him out because there is no door to the office. So the only way to, to get rid of him would be to um, train him to never come up here um, 
or to lock him up in another room. And I don't, I don't love either of those options because um, there are cat toys up here that they can enjoy. So we'll see. We'll see. So anyway, so this is where we are. So we things that are still to do. Um, let me go swap paper really quickly. Um, is um, still to do with this album. We've got. He's already in the trash. He's already in the trash. Hey, buddy. Boop. We got to figure out what we're going to do inside these smaller pages. That's thing one. Thing two, we got to figure out what inserts we're going to do in these back pockets. Okay. Three, we've got to figure out what inserts we're going to do in these front pockets, as well as we have to mat the front pockets and design their closures. Everything on the backs done. And then of course, when we're done with all of that, we have to design a front and back cover, do a spine and all of that. So um, I did spend some time this week, just as just your reminder um, that one of the best things you can do for your nails, if you're not happy with the strength and flexibility of your nails is to oil them. And specifically you wanna use jojoba oil um, and I'm just holding it here so you can read it. Kligonic is the brand that I use and um, it is, I believe, linked on the Amazon list. So in the video description, there's always a link to like my favorites on Amazon or my recommendations. I forget what they call it. I think they call it an idea list. Um, but anyway, my Amazon storefront, whatever, that just has links to tools and other things that I use. And this is one of them. And so what you do when you, when you first start using it is um, you put it on your nails, you wait an hour. If after an hour your nails are dry, you do it again. So you put it on and then put it on your nails, wait an hour. If your nails are dry, you do it again. And you just keep doing that until after an hour, there's still oil on your nails. And then that's how you know your nails are hydrated. And then after that, it's just upkeep. And where I put it is right here. Okay, so I'm not putting it like on my nail. I put the drop here, I rub it into the nail bed and then I swipe it up on the, up on the nail. And um, the reason jojoba oil specifically is because this is the only oil molecule that is small enough to penetrate the layers of the nail bed. So every other oil molecule is too big and can only sit on top of the nail, which means the only part of the nail that's getting high Hydration is that the very top part that's exposed to the air, not the whole entire nail. He's on my back now. <laughs> hey, baby. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Okay, sir. Okay. That was a trick. You made me think that you loved me so you could attack the microphone. <laughs> what the? <laughs> what a manipulative little punk. What a manipulative little punk. Anyway, so if you're having nail trouble, this really does work. It's gonna take time for the full results because you have to wait for a full nail to grow all the way out, although it will help your nail in the short term. So it's not like it's gonna do nothing, you know, in the short term, but in the long term is when it will really help. Anyway, and I had said last week that I was having lots of problems with hang nails and cuticle dryness and things like that. And that is because I had just kind of taken a vacation from using nail oil and doing keeping my nails done and whatever. So now I'm in recovery mode. Okay. If you don't see it on my list, let me just add it really quickly <clears throat> so that it'll be there um, for future, future recommendations. And also I think if I add it to the list, then you can just refresh the list and it'll be there. So Marcel, please stop. Okay, so. Klugonic jojoba oil. Hey, buddy. Ooh. They also have a non-GMO version. It's twice um, and a version with a pump. But those are more expensive, so I'm just gonna put the one that I just showed 
you know, which is the four ounce organic one. And then if you, you know, use that bottle up and you're like, oh, okay, this is really excellent. Then you can get the one with the pump, which is 16 ounces. So it's like four times the size. And it takes a long time to go through this anyway. So I would start with the four. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with a Marcel on my back. So, so here we are. Okay. Add to list. Catherine scraps my favorite things. Okay, so it has been added. And I just looked and it is on there. So, yep. All righty. Along with my sunscreen and also this mug, this 40 ounce tumbler that fits in your cup holder, which I strongly recommend for hydration purposes. Okay, so. All right, so it's on my list now. We are good to go. So, and now we have Marcel decorations on the flap. So let's talk about what we're gonna put in these folders. Let's start there. I'm gonna grab a notebook and um, we will think about, I want to make two. You want, you want to go in there, buddy? Okay. You go in there. All right. So I have grabbed the cursed notebook. Unfortunately, that's the one that's sitting on the top. I probably should have just gotten rid of it, but <laughs> here we go. Okay. So I want to do two, maybe three inserts. Now we're, we would do them all the same in each one. So we would make three of each. So it would be a, like a total of nine inserts. But what I'm thinking is I want something kind of, I want a larger one. So this is going to be like a, a Goldilocks situation where there's like a small one, a medium one, and a large one. So one that's like, you know, close to filling this. So maybe, um, eight by 10, somewhere around there. Maybe we'll come up with something. Um, then maybe um, one that's more like a five by seven ish and then one that's maybe tag shaped. Okay, so for the, for the lar let's, let's call this the, the Papa. This is the Papa Bear. Okay, so for the Papa Bear, um, oop, hello, sir. Oh, also in regards to Marcel, um, look how much better he looks, um, in terms of his scratches and things. Um, so remember we talked about how, you know, Marcel either had ringworm or food allergies and signs were pointing towards food allergies and we were working on his diet. Well, um, since then Damien has developed ringworm. So, it's a good news, bad news situation. Bad news is Damien has ringworm. Poor Damien. Thoughts and prayers um, for Damien that that's like quick, <laughs> that he doesn't have to deal with that long. Um, so that's bad news for, for him. But it's good news for Marcel because the spot that was either ringworm or a scar, the hair is growing back. And from what I read online, when the hair grows back, um, that's a sign that the cat's immune system has conquered the ringworm. So um, that now, I mean, we have a call into the vet to see if he, Marcel needs to go into the vet to just confirm all of that, you know, um, and we'll see, of course, what the vet says. If the vet wants to see him, then he'll go see the vet. But um, if the vet's like, oh, yeah, if his hair is growing back, no big deal. He's cool. Then um, then Marcel is done. And, you know, all of his itching is healing. So he's feeling much better. Um, so he's doing great. Um, and um, we found foods that he likes, that he wants to eat. So um, he's, he's in a great spot. So anyway, okay, so here's what I'm thinking for the Papa Bear. What if we make, okay. I'm thinking, you know, these that we do, 
I'm wondering if, okay, so that's not going to fit. I was going to say, could we make it so that this was the width? And we cannot. <laughs> so that's okay. That's okay. Um, all right, so that answers that. So we'll just stick that back in there. All right, so that can't be, so they can't be eight and seven eighths inches wide. All right, so that's okay. All right, so then here's, no, 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 no. That's a magnet and you can't eat a magnet, sir. You cannot. Oh my goodness. What the? Marcel, you're going to have to go on the, here, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Relax, relax. Here, here, you have that. Okay. All right. So what if we, okay, you're sitting on the cursed notebook. Can you, there we go. Thank you. All right. So if one flap is one of those six and a half by eight and seven eighths. So the whole thing is, um, let's say we'll make it 10. So the back piece is like 10 inches. Then we have one flap, which is eight and seven eighths or six and a half by eight and seven eighths. Then we need like another flap that's maybe like four by six. And then let's think about for this back piece, what do we, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so we would make this, let's say we'll make it eight by 10. So we need one piece that's, um, eight inches by 10 inches. And then we need one piece that's seven and a half by eight and seven eighths. Okay. And then we need one piece that's seven and a half by four and a half. I don't know, seven and a half by four and a half. Okay, and then that's how, that's how it'll fold together. Okay, all right, so it's just, it's my fault because I use the cursed notebook and that's what's making Marcel frisky. It's my fault, it's my fault. He's just being affected by the curse. Okay, now, um, these are large pieces of, this would require two pieces of cardstock per one of these. So we would need six total pieces of cardstock. So let's go, first of all, do a cardstock inventory and see if that's achievable with the green cardstock. Um, all right, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have ten full size. And then in terms of scraps, you know, there are some, but, you know, it's not necessarily like a ton. Now, worst case scenario, there are browns we can use. Um, earlier, I pulled the... Um, the color made smooth and silky, literally the one called brown. Um, the one called brown, which is not my favorite brown. I think my favorite brown is bark, actually. Um, but brown is the one that works best with this collection, in my opinion. Um, the other thing is I still have a lot of that charcoal left. And the charcoal would also work. So we can also use charcoal or brown if we don't have enough. So let's... Okay, yeah, because none of the, I mean, we've been good about using scraps and, and preserving our cardstock as much as possible. So, you know, there's not gonna be a ton, a ton here. But there are some things we're gonna be able to do. So let's go ahead and just do this. Let's start there. And let's, um, so I need, what did I say? I need six of these. So I need, I'm gonna set these to the side for a second. What we may end up doing is have one insert of each color or something like that if we really, if it looks like it's gonna be dire, you know. Um, okay, so first things first, I'm gonna cut three of them to be eight by 10. All right, 
So here's the three that are eight by 10. They are gonna, uh-oh, oh my goodness. So they are too big, okay, that's fine, that's fine. We'll make them eight by nine and a half. Let's try eight by nine and a half. Or just eight by nine. No, it's the eight that has to go, it's not the nine. Okay, if they're too wide, they can't be eight. So we'll make them seven by 10, seven and a half by 10. All right, let's try seven and a half by 10. Okay, seven and a half by 10 will work. All righty, so they're now seven and a half by 10. This is what I get for using the cursed notebook, okay. All right, seven and a half by 10. Okay, and then before I move on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these three and I am gonna turn them into a 12 by 12 sheet. So I'm gonna reclaim, cause they're all four inches. I'm gonna reclaim these and make them 12 by 12. All right, so we'll start with that. Now, this is kind of like, do I need, do you need to do this? You know, no, I just, oh my gosh. He could probably be in a coma. And if he thought there was a chance of a paper scrap in his future, he would, he, it would, he would rise from his sick bed and run up here. <laughs> That's how dedicated he is to paper scraps, right? Right? Is that correct, sir? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. All right. Now now we have one more 12 by 12. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, so. We've got our seven and a half inch sheets. We've got our 12 by 12. So now what we need is the seven and a half inch by eight and seven eighths and the seven and a half inch by four and a half. Those can come from the same thing. Because if we cut a, a seven and a half inch strip, this strip that will be left over will be four and a half inches. So we can cut that second piece off of this. So piece number one is we're gonna cut the seven and a half by eight and seven eighths, and then piece number two will be the seven and a half by four and a half. So let's go ahead and get those cut. And I'm just gonna, you know, every time I come over here to use the trimmer, I'm gonna change the printer. Now, one of the things I kind of wanted to do was put a pocket on the back. That may not be something we do, but we'll, we'll, we'll see.
Okay. So there and there. And then we have these scraps. I'm not gonna try to assemble those into anything because, you know. Um, we do have these two big pieces. So one of the things I considered is we can maybe make a pocket for the back out of something like this, these larger scraps. And we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. All right. So, all right, let's get to assemblage. All right. Okay, so we've got the base here, which is the seven and a half by uh, 10, these big ones they're not gonna get scored. So then we have the seven and a half by eight and seven eighths. Um, are they eight and seven eighths? Yes, okay, seven and a half by eight and seven eighths. These are gonna get scored on the seven and a half inch side at six and a half inches. You wanna help with scoring? Is that, is that it? You wanna help? You wanna help? Hey. <laughs> You're such a dork. You're such a dork. All right. What? Excuse me. <sighs> well, little does he know that I have a spare. And then it's the same with these. They are gonna get scored on the seven and a half inch at six and a half as well. Let's just go ahead and fold along all the score lines and burnish. Watch your toes. You don't want to get you don't want to get your toes crushed. Cr crush your toes, your little tiny toes. All right. Okay. So, all right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put tape on the underside of the flap. So, because we're going to hook them over, right? And I'm gonna just use two lines of 3 8 inch tape. And we'll do a tape bracelet. And I'm just gonna keep it away from the score line. So I'm not gonna put it like right on the score line. Like I'm gonna put it right on the edge, but not right on the score line. So I'm gonna leave about a 16th of an inch, I would say don't need to make it as big as an eighth, but. Um, okay. And I just wanna. Okay. Keep going with these. Now 
The reason I'm leaving this breathing room between a score line and the edge of the tape is because sometimes when you fold these over, you know, if you don't get it exactly precisely correct, then some of that tape can show just a little bit in the crack. And so you can just not worry about that if you just give yourself a little bit of breathing room. All right. He'll probably get bored of the office one day, right? You know? And we're going to do that with both sizes as well. You know, he'll probably, it'll lose its mystique. And we can have quiet shows again. Totally. That'll happen. That'll happen one day. <laughs> we can hope. <laughs> Hello, sir. How are you? Okay, that was a mistake. That's on me. That's on me. That's on me. I did that. I'm sorry. Hey, hey. <laughs> Um, he and Tiny are getting along better. So um, the major improvement in his relationship with Tiny Cat has come from um, Tiny Cat changing how she interacts with him. So essentially before what was happening was um, Tiny Cat, she's a flight. She's not, you know, in, in fight, freeze, flight, she's a flight. Okay. So what was the problem was, hey, I need this. Uh, was that when she would see him and she would freak out and then she would like back away, run away, retreat essentially. And he took that as an invitation to chase, to play and that sort of thing. Well, she has since learned that, you know, that's not helpful to her situation, that he won't leave her alone if she retreats. So she started um, hissing and swatting, which he responds very well to hissing and swatting kitty has taught him you know like tiny cat is benefiting from some of the work kitty has done now um because if tiny cat hisses he will stop whatever it is he was doing um and in fact he's now been able to spend enough time with her that um he does understand that kind of her moods right so um she now, like, you know, if he's trying to creep up on her. So, see, now we all have, like, whenever we have an itch, now we're all like, is, it, is, is this an itch or is it ringworm? And then also, look, I don't even know how I did that. I'm, I'm get, I just, like, do, how many of you have this thing where you're like, well, that's a bruise I don't remember <laughs> getting. Okay. So, now, now we have these. And I'm trying to think. He's, he's on my back again. So, um. Okay, so this will be a layout of some kind. Ow. And then this will fold over it, and it will have two photos on it. And this will fold over that, and it will be decorative and probably have a photo on the back. Okay? So the question is on the back, do we want to just do, like, a nice sheet of paper so you can admire a view? Or do we want to use this somehow to create some kind of additional po additional pocket um and i'm thinking we probably don't need to use these to create additional pockets because that is quite a bit going on already so you just you, you think it's well i don't want to let's just let's uh my i mean i guess the theory is when it happened it didn't hurt so bad that you were like I'm going to remember this. It was just like maybe you whacked your arm on a doorknob or something and you're like, ow, and then you just shake it off and move about your day. So it doesn't leave like a lasting memory of the injury. <laughs> sir, sir. <laughs> okay. All right. So what are we going to need? We're going to need photo mats for this. Okay. 
And we could put a design on the front too and like have two photos of here. Let's do that. So we need a total of, let's count. We need two photos to go on the back of this and one photo to go on the back of this. And then for inside, I don't know what we're gonna do inside. I mean, we could have two photos split. Let's, we, let's not worry about the inside for now. So we need three um, four by six horizontals um, per. So that's a total of six, no, nine four by six horizontals that we need to do all three of them, nine. And then I think what we'll do with the inside is we'll do two four by fours and then kind of pattern paper, play with pattern paper. So we need nine, let me write this down. So for Papa, we need nine four by six horizontal and then we need two per, so that's a total of six four by four. And I will cut the four by fours. I'll probably just make four by sixes and cut them down. So that means we need a total of, I need 15 four by sixes. So let's look at um, do how many I have already and then how many I might need to print. The only problem is I can't just kind of quickly print them because I'm still printing the paper we're gonna use to decorate. So, um, it's going to be a minute before I can do any kind of printing like that. Okay, he thought I was going downstairs, so he raced downstairs. And I thought maybe he would stay down there, but as soon as he realized I was not going downstairs, <laughs> he's back. All right, that's okay, that's okay. It's fine, Mars. Oh, here's the notebook that isn't cursed. So now we know where that has, has gotten off to. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna look through this stack of papers I have over here because I thought I printed more than I would need, question mark. Um, so I would have some extras. And here are some verticals. So I can cut those verticals into um, the four by fours. Okay, Marcel, you're standing on the paper pile that I need. And I just feel like that's on purpose, buddy. I feel like, and here's some paper I cut to print, but then haven't printed yet. And then here's some paper that's been printed. So, okay. All right, so these are verticals as well. So we have enough verticals because how many verticals did I need? Six, and I have here eight. I have here eight. So we have enough, we have enough. Okay. All right, so, okay. Now I'm gonna four by six pinwheel these. Or six and a quarter, cause these are six and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I cut, I put them at six and a quarter and cut up to four and a quarter. Okay, and then these, we're gonna cut, we need to cut two inches off of them so it'll be four and a quarter by four and a quarter. But this is not 
perfectly centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one and a half inches off the top. And then I'm going to cut a half an inch off the bottom. And that's a little bit better. Okay. So. Okay. And then last one of this one. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to move a printer sheet and then. Um, so, in terms of like what, why I've had to do so much printing, you know, we are using quite a lot of paper in this in this one okay quite a lot of paper in this one so this is a pretty big project in terms of paper usage um, and therefore um, we're just you know uh, just that's something to be aware of especially if you're going to buy your paper versus um, printing your paper if you're printing your paper you know it's whatever you can just kind of keep um, going. Uh, keep printing as you go. But if you buy your paper, you you are going to need quite a bit of it, actually. Hey, hey, Marcel, if you're not going to be part of the solution, huh, buddy? Huh? Okay, and then. Um, <laughs> These I'm going to cut on the big trimmer. I can just cut the whole stack at once. And again, I'm going to cut an inch and a half off the top and a half an inch off the bottom. Oh my gosh, Marcel. Could you love me a little less right now, please? Here. Look at that. There's paper. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and tape these. And then for the nine four by sixes, we're going to have to... Um, we may have to hand stamp them, but we'll see. We'll see. Just because of where we are with printing. But yeah, this is this has used quite a bit of paper, and I think there's a couple reasons. One is it's very large, and then two is that you know with all with all the inserts and things, there's been lots of opportunities to showcase designs, um, which I do love doing, but you know, when you showcase designs, you have to use bigger pieces of paper because you can't just kind of use strips. Marcel, don't you want to go downstairs? I think Damien's home from work. Why don't you go say hi to Damien? Why don't you go apologize? Huh? <laughs> you could go apologize. Anyway, he's a curious little guy with a lot of energy, so, and he's a baby, so here we are. All right. Okay. I actually think he might have listened to me and gone downstairs. Hey, go downstairs. Okay. All right, 
right, Damien has enticed him. Okay. I don't, I actually don't know exactly how old he is. I'm not sure if anyone knows exactly how old he is because he was a street cat. But he was young enough when he was uh, trapped to be socialized and adopted. So. Okay, so my hand is itching because he scratched me. So if you see this red patch on my hand, it's because he scratched me and I'm having a histamine reaction because I'm allergic to kitties. He scratched me on the palm of my hand yesterday too. He wanted to extend whatever this line is. He just didn't think it was long enough. So this, this section right here is courtesy of Marcel. <laughs> so... I said, if he has to go to the vet, <laughs> can, can they clip his nails <laughs> so while he's there? So we'll see. Okay. Uh, I missed these two, so oops. We'll do these. And then all right. Okay, so I'm going right along. Okay, so let's take a little bit of a, mo let's take a moment to hydrate everyone. Ah, all right. Drink some water. Everybody drink some water. Okay. All right, so there we go. Now, we've got all of these. These are ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one in the top left, or top right corner and one in the bottom left corner of this. And then the rest of it we'll figure out, you know, we'll decorate around them. And this will be a way where we can include some spaces for journaling and um, the like if we so choose. Okay. So.
Okay. So now we've got just two more of those to go. All right. So going to, again, I'm, I'm going to repeat that top right corner, bottom left corner. And last one. And then we just have two left over, I guess. Okay, I'm just like casually putting it on upside down while staring at it. Nice. Okay. Candy said, we're just south of Cleveland on our way to our cry. And I assume she means cruise. Um, but, you know, traveling can make you want to cry, too, sometimes. So it could be she's on her way to a good cry. It could be in the chat. So uh, have fun on your cry slash cruise, your cry cruise, uh, Candy. I hope it's a good time. And that you avoid any big storms. It's, um, you know, I think you will because it just has not been an active hurricane season, which I am not mad about. So, remember, uh, Mr. Lifeguard and I took a cruise in the Western Caribbean. And uh, we had to sail around a hurricane and, oof. Talk about seasick. Talk about seasick. Not very fun. Not very fun. Okay. All right. So that's that. So next steps are, ooh, okay. So we're going to stick these two pieces on. And the way that I always like to do this is I hold it like this so I can kind of look straight at it and then I just eyeball it. And then I just fold it around to the back and burnish. Okay. And then same thing with the other side. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to perfectly center it. I'm going to have it be like this so that it's not perfectly, perfectly centered. I'm going to kind of, let me measure what this is. Two inches up from the bottom is about what I'm doing. All right. And then burnish. Yeah. I mean, it ended up being two and a quarter. It's an eyeball, so okay. 
So repeat. Burnish. Tape. Now, if you don't want to eyeball, and you want them all to be the same, which is not necessary because they're not in the same pocket, they're not going to be near each other, who cares? But if you want them to all be the same, then just line them up with each other, and then they'll all be eyeballed the exact same amount. done. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do magnets and tin caps. And we're going to kind of put it more towards the corner, not quite right the middle so that we're behind, definitely behind this four by six card when we are done. So let's pull out magnets and tin caps. And I don't usually, I don't, Normally I start with the tin cap when possible. This time I am gonna start with the uh, magnets. I have three magnets left and I, or I have three magnets to do and I have three uh, glue dots left. So we are gonna finish a glue dot bag, which is impressive. <laughs> Uh, like mildly it's not super impressive but it's mildly impressive all right okay then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tin cap on it. Let me get, get out three tin caps. So, and then I'm going to, actually, let's do it this way. I'm going to put ATG on the tin cap, and then we'll just close it and press it down and then we can uh, put tape and I remember Sandra saying a good use for the 1 8 inch miracle tape is these to hold down the temporary hold temporarily hold these down while you're doing your other crafting so you're not using your quarter inch tape okay okay so that's one two We'll do two now. The tin caps, these are, um, these are called tin roofing caps. And um, I think they're uh, not really, they're being phased out and replaced with plastic. But um, if you check your hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, places like that, and if not, when I heard that they were being phased out as a common building material and that most, uh, that roofers were switching to plastic, um, I did buy a ton and they're available in our store as well at katherinescraps.com. 
So if you can't find them at your hardware store, um, you can get them from us as well. And they're not, they're not expensive. Um, but yeah, I did buy, I have tons of them. So I have plenty for me for years and you all for years as well. So, um, but yeah, these are tin roofing caps and they do have, they are ferrous. So they are, there is iron in them at least a little bit. So they do attract a magnet. So yeah, and we have the tape as well, the miracle tape. So that's also available in our shop. All right, so there we go. All right, we used up a entire glue dot and we've got our three books so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a recording break here because the construction of these is done and we're moving on to the next uh, style uh, is what I think we'll do because uh, we can't finish the matting because I don't have the photo mats printed so this is construction of large pocket insert number one is what this is going to be and um, I'm going to do a recording break here and we'll work on large pocket insert number two. So for those of you who are here live while I'm broadcasting, just hang tight. Nothing's going to change for you. For those of you who are watching in the YouTube playlist or in the archives, just go ahead and click to the next video to see the next insert. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.